hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jemima today we are going to be discussing my mock question paper but today is for physiology if you've not watched the discussion of my mock anatomy question please go and see it i'll put the links up i divided it into three different parts i'm going to put the links up for you so just go and see it so um and please if you're a medical student please remember to subscribe to my channel if you've not done so and if you have subscribed already remember please turn on the notification bell so that when i upload a video youtube will notify you so let's get on with today's video i don't know if you're hearing the background noise sorry about that my neighbors are fighting <laughs> physiology actually gave us six questions to answer five. Oh, god bless this department <laughs> For number one, we're asked to give the detailed account of the hypothalamic control of the posterior pituitary secretions. So if you encounter a question like this, you need to at least have knowledge of the secretions of the, uh, of the posterior pituitary gland. You need to know it. You need to know how it is connected to the hypothalamus. You need to know, you need to also take note of the hypothalamal hypophysial tract. You also need to take note of the neurophysins. What are the actions of this posterior pituitary secretion? You know, it's just oxytocin and ADH or vasopressin. That's what you want to call it. You need to know what is their effect. How, what is the link between these secretions and the hypothalamus? So number two, we were asked, 2A, we're asked to define long volumes and capacity. This one is just straightforward. You just define the long volumes, define the long capacity, you're good to go if you can try and put in their exact value like you know tidal value is 500 mi milliliter you can put in that value then if you can also draw that graph the spirogram that would be very very nice for you to add the mark then to be were asked to explain the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve this is also quite straightforward it's just a curve make sure you write an introduction define the curve it's uh, the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen and the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with the oxygen then you make sure you draw the curve or the graph you know the curve is s-shaped or sigmoid shaped it would be nice for you to include it and then when you draw it you know what is on the y-axis you know what is on the on the x-axis you know that when the partial pressure of o oxygen is 100 mmhg that's millimeter mercury in the percentage and saturation of hemoglobin is 95 percent it's definitely never 100 percent saturated with oxygen so just make sure you note at this different point at 40 mmhg at 50 mmhg you know those are things like that then we move on to number 3a we were asked to compare the features of sympathetic nervous system with parasympathetic nervous system this is straightforward also if you can even list 10 differences please do now for me i listed six because in my notes this is it was six we were giving then b mentioned two types of the following drugs that stimulate sympathetic activities drugs that inhibit sympathetic activities this is also straightforward very easy to grab all your four marks then then 3c discuss the mechanism of sweat secretion this question is quite tricky the mechanism of sweat secretion you need to at least st say something about the the structure of the sweat glands the cord parts and the tubular part of the gland the secretion, the eccrine, apocrine, even the, the type of secretion, apocrine secretion, eccrine secretion, apo eccrine secretion, just stuff like that. What happens when sweat is concentrated? What happens when dilute sweat is produced? What stimulates the production of sweat? The mechanism of action of antiperspirant. Number 4A, we ask to ex briefly explain why mature gametes carry only one set of chromosomes. There are so many reasons you can give, but you know, fertilization, for me, I, I actually gave two reasons. You know, for a question like this, they don't need stories. They've already told you to briefly explain why they carry just one set of chromosomes. I can't give you the detailed reason here because I'm not here to tell you the answer. I'm just here to guide you on how to answer and, and what, what, what and what you should look out for when you're studying stuff like this. So you can Google it or check your textbook. To find details but basically you can say something about fertilization you know the male and the female gametes join together to form the diploid number of um, chromosome it's then number four b we're asked um of what each of the three male accessory glands contribute to the semen 
question like this is just straightforward. You prostate gland produces prostatic fluid. fluid. What are the components of the prostatic fluid? Sem seminal vesicles produces seminal fluid. What are the components? Bubble ureter or carpal? You just list. It's, this one is just straightforward. That's one thing I love about physiology. No unnecessary protocol. Then first he said, describe the physiological mechanism involving, okay, involved in penile erection. Erection. You know that penile erection is is the first thing you should know is that it's 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 controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system you just you know write it down what and what are the check your notes or check your textbook everything is written out uh, step by step you can even draw a flow chart to indicate this this will be very very nice also don't forget to say something about the contractile tissues okay the corpus spongiosum corpora cavernosa Number five, we're asked to write extensively on the muscle spindle and its functional ma manifestation. This one is not straightforward, I must say. You need to write about the structure of the muscle spindle. You need to say something about its function. Here, you should definitely put in the introduction, put the function, the innovation of it. You know that there's a nuclear bag, fiber, nuclear chain fibers, the extrafusal fiber, in intrafusal fibers. You just need to say something about each of them. Make sure each of them are under different headings. If you've not seen my video on how to answer physiology questions please go and see it before you come here so that you understand what i'm talking about i'll put the link up for you guys then 6a um, enumerates the significance and importance of body fluid in man in our notes we we're giving six in number so i i assume that that is what the lecturer wanted so i just listed all of them in that manner and gave a short um description under each heading for the lecturer then 6b briefly describe the intracellular compartment of body fluid this is just expecting you to write about icf so simple just straightforward what are the components of icf what is the percentage um of icf compared to the whole total body body water content or body fluid content that's just what they are asking you to talk about oh plenty plenty stories physiology is bam <laughs> Physiology is, is king. <laughs> it makes things easy. Physiology should not be a problem to you. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please, video, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you've not done so. And if you've subscribed already, please turn on that notification bell. Next week, I'm going to tell you about the biochemistry. I'm going to um, show you my bi biochemistry question paper and tell you what and what is expected of you. And I'm also going to talk about the practicals and what and what is expected of you. So see you next week. I remain your Go to my mama. Bye.